Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of AirShaper. In this video, we'll explain how you can build an aero map for your own race car. But what exactly is an aero map? And what on earth do maps have to do with race cars? Well, in general terms, a map is a tool to store and visualize the relationship between different parameters, like the altitude of a terrain, a function of the longitude and the latitude. Or, in case of a race car, the aerodynamic drag, lift and balance in function of the setup of the car, like the ride height at the front, the ride height at the rear, the angle of the rear wing, and so on. So in general, aero mapping can be described as mapping the relationship between geometric properties of the car on one hand and the aerodynamic properties of the car on the other hand. So why do you need an aero map? Well, when it comes to racing, every second matters. Not just for lap times, but also for the setup of the car, prior to and during the race. If you have an oversteer or understeer problem, for example, you can try to mitigate this by shifting the aerodynamic balance forward or backwards. And the aerodynamic balance is the distribution of the downforce between the front axle and the rear axle. Or you want to use the aero maps for preparation for a given circuit. If the circuit contains a lot of high speed corners, you may want to go for a high downforce setting. But if the circuit has a lot of long straights, the drag penalty associated with such a high downforce setting is not really wishful. So in general, it's essential to have a clearly mapped relationship between the setup of the car and the aerodynamic properties to do a correct setup of the car during the race. Because then there is no room for trial and error. Okay, so we have you convinced you need error maps. So where do you buy one? Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy, for a number of reasons. First of all, the manufacturers don't always share this data, and even if they do share it, the data is not always accurate or useful to you. Second of all, you can try and build your own aero maps in a wind tunnel, but if you want to do it properly, you need one with a moving floor which can easily cost thousands of euros per hour, not even to mention the cost of preparation of the wind tunnel campaign and the data processing afterwards. A budget-friendly way of building your own aero maps is by running CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics simulations, on the different setups of your car. Let's have a look at how it can be done. First of all, you'll need a 3D model, and again, it'll be tough to get one directly from the manufacturer. But luckily, there's plenty of professional modelers out there that provide high-quality 3D models of many different race cars for just a few hundred euros. And with AirShaper able to run simulations directly on such models, even if they contain gaps and holes that normally crash CFD simulations, you can use these models just as they are, or have us modify them to match your car in specific. To illustrate the process of error mapping, we'll be using this public 3D model of the 2016 Audi R8 LMS. We took the base car and then increased the ride height at the front and the rear at the same time by 20mm in two steps. And then we monitored the effect on different aerodynamic properties. First, let's start with the drag and the downforce. As you can see, increasing the ride height doesn't really impact the aerodynamic drag but it significantly reduces the downforce on the car. Normally, the air underneath the car is accelerated, helped by the front splitter and the rear diffuser. But if you increase the ride height, reduce this acceleration underneath the car and you lose downforce. So actually, we should be doing the opposite, because you can gain a lot of downforce at hardly any drag penalty. So why didn't we? Well, most regulations actually prohibit you from doing this because they have a lower limit on the right height. And also, if you lower the car too much, you can actually block or choke the flow going underneath the car and that would again result in a loss of downforce. So there's an optimum. But downforce is much more complex than just a single number. As mentioned before, the aerodynamic balance, or aero balance in short, describes the distribution of the downforce between the front wheels and the rear wheels. Too much push on the front wheels and they will grip very nicely, but the rear will be allowed to lose grip and you will have some oversteer. So it's quite important to tune the balance nicely and, if possible, align it with the weight distribution of the car itself. In this example, we can see that increasing the ride height not only results in a loss of downforce in general, but it also shifts that downforce towards the back of the car. You can try to compensate for this by playing with the front splitter, for example, with the angle of the rear wing, or even the rake of the entire car. If you're allowed by regulations, by the way. 
So that was it for this short video on error mapping. I hope you liked it and I'm looking forward to see your comments below to start the discussion. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye bye.